Word came today from a reliable source that the Federal Reserve may start to taper its string of consistent interest rate hikes as soon as next month. At the same time, the central bank tries to tamp down inflation. But that doesn't mean that higher interest rates are over yet. And as William Brangham tells us, some Democrats and economists worry that the Fed has already hit the brakes too hard. Judy, the Fed has raised interest rates six times this year. Today, Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell suggested again during a speech at the Brookings Institution that a seventh hike, albeit a smaller one, is on the way next month. In a wide-ranging interview, he signaled rates could remain high for some time to combat inflation. And he said that while rising wages were not the reason inflation initially spiked, he said they're a key part of the puzzle now. The inflation that we saw at the beginning of this episode in, back in March of 21 was not really related to wages at all. It was related to tightness in, in goods markets, largely due to supply chain issues. Over time, though, um, inflation has now spread broadly through the economy. And while I would still say that the inflation we're seeing now is not, is not principally related to wages, we think that wage increases are probably going to be a very important part of the story going forward. Many progressives have criticized the pace and the scope of these rate hikes. Rakeem Maboud is among those voices. She's the chief economist and managing director of policy and research at a progressive think tank known as the Groundwork Collaborative. Rakeem Maboud, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I know you listened to what Jay Powell had to say today. Were you at all encouraged by what he had to say, or, or do you still think that the medicine is worse than the cure? You know, what I heard today is Chair Powell say that he is willing to do whatever it takes to bring prices down. You know, I think a more cautious approach is really warranted. As you said, we've seen six rate hikes this year, and Chair Powell himself said today that we have not yet seen the full effect of those rate hikes play out in our economy yet. So, you know, we really risk overshooting. We really risk throwing the economy into a devastating recession that would put millions of people out of work. And that's just not a price that we should ask the very people who have been bearing the brunt of higher prices to bear. Do you look at the economy today, and we got some more good news today, that, that, that job growth is growing, that the economy does seem, to, it's maybe not growing as fast as it was before, but it does seem like it's doing better. Does that give you any sense that maybe Powell and the Fed have threaded this needle appropriately? We really do have a strong labor market. That's been fantastic to see over the course of this recovery. And that's frankly a direct result of Congress and the administration's actions to invest in the people who keep our economy going. You know, after the Great Recession, we it took us six years to um, really recover. We've done that much more quickly this time around. I am really concerned that Chair Powell's actions are neither addressing the root causes of the inflation that we're seeing today, namely supply chain snarls, a war in Ukraine, corporate profiteering, and also it's going to potentially really harm the millions of people who are really struggling with higher prices already. When you look at that pain in the economy, who is that hurting the most? It's always the most vulnerable people in our economy who are hurting the most, right? If you're poorer and the price of essentials goes up, then you have less of your budget to pay your rent and to pay for other things that you need to pay. Um, and and that's, that's always the case. So, and, and similarly, you know, an aggressive rate hike campaign like the one that Chair Powell is in the midst of would really, really harm some of the most marginalized workers in our economy. So, you know, economists such as Larry Summers have advocated for unemployment rates as high as 10 percent to combat inflation. When you unpack what that actually means, that means in unemployment rates of nearly 20 percent for black workers. That means families not being able to put food on the table, food which is already too expensive because of rampant corporate profiteering. You mentioned several things that are driving this, supply chain issues, the war in Ukraine, and profiteering. Uh, the companies argue they're not profiteering, but let's just say if we take your argument that you believe that they are, what is a policy remedy for that? That's a very tricky thing to try to identify and to say, aha, we've got an example of you jacking up prices here, and thus we're going to do X about that. What, what would you prescribe? We actually do have a lot of evidence that profiteering is happening. 
you know, my organization and I have listened to hundreds of earnings calls. And what we hear on these earnings calls is very clear. You know, CEOs are very forthright to their investors that inflation has been good for business and that they are raising prices on consumer in order to bring in record profits. I mean, just today we saw, um, you know, the highest profits on record um, for non-financial corporations in the U.S. at $2.08 trillion. Um, and so, you know, I think that's, that's important to note that we actually do know that this is happening. In terms of policy solutions, you know, there are a range of tools that policymakers have to address inflation and, and higher prices. Um, you know, President Biden recently proposed an excess profits tax on oil and gas companies. I think that's a really good start. I would love to see, um, you know, a bigger tax on windfall profits more generally so that companies start reinvesting those profits into making better products and bringing down prices and, and improving workers' lives, frankly, rather than padding the pockets of their shareholders. You know, we could also make price gouging illegal. Three quarters of states have a price gouging statute on the books. Um, we could do that at the federal level and, and, and just say this is illegal behavior. And then finally, there are lots of regulatory things that we can also see, uh, we can also do. So the Federal Trade Commission and the Department of Justice can tackle the, you know, really excess corporate power and consolidation that we have in our economy that's been driving a lot of these price hikes and the pricing power that these companies have to jack up prices on consumers, they can also tackle exploitative and extractive behavior. So I think while we are often really quick to go to the Fed to address issues of inflation, there's actually a much broader set of policy tools that we can use in order to bring prices down. I want to ask you about the, the sound we heard from Jay Powell, who's arguing that the tight labor market, which drives wages up, which a lot of workers love to have more in their paycheck, Powell's arguing that that's exacerbating the inflationary pressures. Do you believe that that's true? And again, if so, what can be done about that? I don't believe that's true. I mean, as I said, you know, there it's pretty clear what the sources of inflation are. It's, you know, corporate profiteering, it's supply chain issues, it's the war in Ukraine that's been driving up the price of commodities. Um, it's not workers. You know, worker wages have been really low for a very, very long time. I think we should be encouraged by the wage growth we're seeing because when workers do well, they're spending um, that money, they're putting, investing that money back into our economy, and that buoys all of us. So, you know, I think it's really important not to blame workers who are already the folks who are really feeling the pinch um, for the crisis that we're in. All right, Rakeem Maboud at the Groundwork Collaborative, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much.